hear a lot of arguments out there that the Second Amendment protects people's rights to an assault weapon. You are a, an expert on such things. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the Second Amendment guarantees you and how it applies to the assault uh, to assault weapons. Yeah, of course, and, and really happy to be here. Uh, so what the Supreme Court has said about the Second Amendment is pretty sparse. It's only weighed in a few times, and it's only definitive uh, answer to the Second Amendment was first in 2008. So we had uh, many years without a Supreme Court decision on the Second Amendment. And what it said about assault weapons in particular is even more vague because it hasn't taken a case on what weapons are protected. But we know from what the Supreme Court has said that although the Second Amendment protects a person's right to keep and bear arms, that not all weapons constitute arms. So it has said, for instance, that dangerous and unusual weapons can be regulated. They're, they fall outside the scope of the Second Amendment altogether. And then most recently, last summer, the Supreme Court weighed in again on another Second Amendment case. This was, again, not about what weapons are protected. But there it said, apply a new legal test to determine whether or not uh, a, and any given gun law is constitutional. And that's also going to have ramifications for any analysis of whether a state assault weapons ban is constitutional. So we know dangerous and unusual weapons are outside the scope altogether. But even if assault weapons do not qualify as dangerous and unusual weapons, the government can still introduce a sufficiently analogous historical tradition of regulating weapons that would make a, an assault weapons ban constitutional. And kind of the million dollar question is, what does that regulatory tradition look like, especially as you know, when weapons have changed so significantly since 1791? So yes, just a bit, right? So dangerous and unusual. So to a lay person like myself, it feels like how is an assault weapon not dangerous and unusual? So how is that defined? Um, who defines it? Right. So there's the there's the million dollar question, right? And the Supreme Court was looking to historical statements by legal scholars and commentators from the 18th and 19th century when it said dangerous and unusual. And those uh, those scholars and commentators and the court itself hasn't said what exactly that means. Um, but we know from looking at historical regulations that there were weapons that were thought particularly useful for criminal use or that were used um, outsized uh, by criminals as opposed to law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. And so there, there have been historical regulations on weapons like Bowie knives or billy clubs or uh, a historical relic now called a slung shot that courts have looked to when they're analogizing to what it looks like to regulate assault weapons today. Um, we know that if, for it to be dangerous and unusual, it can't be something that is extremely common. And the argument by gun rights proponents have been that there are something like 10 to 20 million weapons that would qualify as assault weapons out there. And for them, they say that's far too co common to be a dangerous and unusual weapon. So if the politics were to allow, which they don't currently, for an assault weapons ban at the federal level, what do you, there would certainly be legal challenges to that, yes. but what is your assessment of how strong a legal challenge to that would be? Right. So some of the uncertainty is generated by the Supreme Court's recent decision last summer, where it changed this legal test for how courts should analyze these. Uh, before that decision last summer, there had been four or five federal circuit courts that had upheld state assault weapons bans on Second Amendment grounds. They had uniformly upheld these laws and said they were consistent with the Second Amendment. Since that decision last summer, there have been two lower court decisions that have upheld new assault weapon bans. So Delaware and Illinois both enacted assault weapon bans um, after that decision. And those lower courts have said these laws are still consistent with the Second Amendment, even on the Supreme Court's reading of what it includes. And so I think part of it, uh, part of how successful those challenges might be is whether or not other courts and the Supreme Court ultimately finds that reasoning persuasive the things like analogies to uh, regulations of Bowie knives and billy clubs and slung shots, yeah. whether or not, yeah, whether or not the current justices see that as sufficiently analogous. And we know that some of the justices have already said they think assault weapons are protected under the Second Amendment in prior decisions that were not uh, sort of binding on the nation as a whole. Uh, and it's, I think it's unclear uh, about um, how some of the justices, specifically um, Justice Amy Coney Barrett or Chief Justice Roberts, might rule on assault weapons bans. So when you hear this argument that's made, frankly, a lot of Republicans, but also made by some Democrats, that they can't support an assault weapons ban because it would violate the Second Amendment. What is your gut reaction to that? 
It's a hard question because the court is has been unclear about the scope of the Second Amendment and the scope of protections for weapons in particular. It hasn't had a weapons case. And so uh, it hasn't given guidance. I think it's fair for legislators to say our reading of the Second Amendment and our reading of the Supreme Court case law supports these kind of laws. And you can look at lower court case law that is upholding these laws. Um, on the other hand, it's uncertain what the court's going to do. And it's not... Um, I, you know, I think it's not unfair to look at this current Supreme Court and say that there's not a lot of gun regulations that they're going to allow, whether that means that legislators should kind of preemptively tie their own hands in response to what they suspect the court is going to do. Now, that's a question for, uh, you know, for the political branches. But um, I think the argument that it violates a uh, the Second Amendment is sort of not so easily cut and dried that legislators should think that they'd be violating any kind of oath to the uh, to the Constitution if they were to enact one. Just re reaffirms the power of the nine justices on the Supreme Court, no question. Right. Uh, <laughs> Professor Charles, thank you so much for taking the time and for explaining to us non-legal minds um, how this all works. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Jen.